Although he's only been the GM of the Dallas Mavericks for the last three years, Nico Harrison has already left his mark, being able to pull off amazing trades like getting Kyrie Irving and Klay Thompson, free agent acquisitions like Najee Marshall, and even drafts like Derek Lively. The moment that Nico Harrison joined the Dallas Mavericks, he was a man on a mission to improve the roster and get this team fighting for a championship. And it's safe to say that he's already accomplished that. The only thing left to do is to win a finals. And although Nico Harrison has continued to do just amazing things with his roster, that doesn't really stop people from thinking that they could also throw on their GM jacket and also propose wild trades. And in this video, we're going to take a look at a crazy trade that was proposed by somebody that's obviously a Knicks fan that results in the Dallas Mavericks acquiring Julius Randle. We're going to take a look at this article, see if there's any truth to it or if it could even happen, and I'll give my thoughts on it as well. But how's it going, everybody? My name is Marcel Martin. This is Mavericks Digest, bringing the latest news on everything Mavericks related. And before we get started with today's video, we're currently sitting at 13,261 subscribers. I just want to say thank you to everyone showing just all the support. I'm feeling all the love, and I appreciate it. I got my own little personal goal of hitting 15,000 subs before the end of the year. And if we keep moving like we're moving, I think we can hit it. But if you want to be up to date on everything Mavericks related, if you want to miss our live streams, the, the news videos, the giveaways, Make sure, you, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on a single thing that we do. But like I said in the intro, Nico Harrison is an amazing GM. I can argue that he's probably the best GM that this team has ever had. I know Nico Harrison didn't draft Dirk. He didn't draft Luka. But it's safe to say that over the last three years, he really just took control of this team and just did, in the words of Jason Kidd, a full 360, able to turn this team around and actually getting us somewhere that we haven't seen in over 10 years. And like I also said, it's that even though he's done all that, even though Nico Harrison has done amazing things with his team, that doesn't stop people from thinking that, hey, I've got an idea. Nico, check this out. So let's go take a look at the article that is apparently saying that the Dallas Mavericks should make a trade for Julius Randle. The article, Blockbuster Mock Trade Sends Knicks All-Star Forward to the Mavericks. Let's see what they have to say. Uh, a writer who goes by RK from TWSN.net predicted that the Knicks will trade the Kentucky product to the Dallas Mavericks before the deadline, citing a potential poor fit in New York being a reason for the franchise to move off of his contract. The trade idea, Dallas Mavericks received Julius Randle. New York Knicks received P.J. Washington, Daniel Gafford, Jaden Hardy, and a 2025 second round pick. So right there, we can discredit everything that this man has to say. I don't like just throwing things out the window. I like to look at things, break it down, and really see where does the truth lie. But I'm sorry, right there, I just I just don't agree with him that. First of all, if you know me, I'm a big fan of P.J. Washington, so no. I understand Julius Randle is a great player in his own right. You could argue that he is better than P.J., but it, this is real life. This isn't 2K where I can just load up all the best players on one team and go undefeated and win as many championships as I want. Being able to fit in a system, being able to fit alongside other players matters. And a GM like Nico Harrison understands that. Mavericks fans, we know when we got Chris as Porzingis, if you're like me, you thought this is amazing. This is a pairing made in heaven. We got Luka. We got Dirk Light and Chris S. Porzingis. We got two guys that can really propel this team forward and dominate. And unfortunately, that's not what happened. Chris S. Porzingis was only here for a few seasons before he was traded away. The Dallas Mavericks knows that Luka Doncic is our star player. You need players that can fit around that player. Not take anything from him, but can play around him. And the first thing that, or at least one of the big things that Nico Harrison did when he first got here was make that trade for Kyrie Irving, a player that no one really wanted. There was a whole debacle during the lockdown. There's a whole crazy thing going on online. Kyrie Irving was missing games. He was getting injured. There was so much being talked about Kyrie negative negatively that he essentially had no trade value where we end up trading Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, and I do believe a pick was involved for Kyrie Irving, a player that everybody said was going to leave the Dallas Mavericks. He was going to go to the Lakers and play with LeBron James. He's a locker room cancer. Da -da -da -da. Even, even Mark Cuban believed that Kyrie was a team killer. And lo and behold, two seasons later, Kyrie Irving is just a focal point of this team. It's still Lucas' team. He's still the face of it. But Kyrie Irving is being able to play at a championship level, at an all-star level, around Luka Doncic. And that's because fit matters. And we saw after the trade deadline in February, P.J. Washington and Daniel Gafford both fit very well on this team around Luka Doncic. To the point where Daniel Gafford was ready to break a record set by Wilt Chamberlain. Daniel Gafford playing his best brand of basketball, although he didn't really play that well in the playoffs compared to the second half of the season for the Dallas Mavericks and he's still growing he's 25 26 years old so he's only going to get better but also we had PJ Washington who looked like our best on-ball defender who also just shot the lights out in the second round against Oklahoma City Thunder 
two players that not many people thought were much of anything, the Dallas Mavericks, Nico Harrison was able to go out and get them onto this team, and it has paid dividends. So just putting that out there, I'm not a big fan of trading away PJ just yet. I'm not a big fan of trading uh, Daniel Gafford just yet. I'm a big fan of Gafford. But to say that, you know, making that trade and getting Julius Randle onto the team just makes us a contender is crazy to me. Especially when you look at Julius Randle. Yes, he is from Dallas. He's from the area. So cool. Bring him on home. That's a selling point. He is injury prone. He does get injured quite often. And it would definitely cause a log jam at certain positions. But let's continue with this article. Let's see what else that they have to say. And I just want to have you all take a look real quick. That trade is ridiculous. Julius Randle for PJ Gafford and Jane Hardy. Jane Hardy may be included in a trade this upcoming season. I do believe that. And that second round picks, whatever. But PJ and Daniel Gafford, you don't trade those guys away when you just made it to the finals and you're trying to make it back. The article continues saying that Randall would form an imposing big four in Dallas alongside Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving, and Klay Thompson, which the Knicks may not want to deal with next season. However, strictly off of what they'd get from the deal is one is one that is attractive enough for the Knicks front office to consider if proposed, especially with a future second rounder thrown in and the salaries match up to make the deal work. I mean, if if the Dallas Mavericks somehow see the New York Knicks in the finals, you're probably going to regret trading away Julius Randle, a player who no longer has to be the first or second option. He'd arguably be the second or third option, maybe even fourth. I mean, with an imposing four, like the article says, yes, offensively, we look amazing defensively we give up so much like we will we will be like the Pacers we can just score crazy amounts of points high scoring games the the other team does as well because our defense would go out the door you trade away Daniel Gafford you have to rely on Maxi Dwight Powell to be your two backup centers for Derek Lively yes you'll have Julius Randle at the four which improves that position but because you're getting rid of both PJ and Daniel Gafford you may have to play Omax more you may have to play Najee Marshall a little bit out of position although Najee is pretty flexible Quentin Grimes may need to play out of position a few players may need to rotate which can really hurt your defense but I get it the offense would be pretty cool but yeah would the Knicks potentially want to see this in the finals I don't really think so but to their credit, for the Knicks, this would be a good trade for them. And I'm not going to go too far into that, but you get someone like PJ, a great defender. You get someone like Gafford, which helps you at the center position, which is something that they have been lacking it. They lost Isaiah Hardenstein to the Thunder. So, yes, you may be looking for a better center. Daniel Gafford would be your option, one of your best options. But the Dallas Mavericks ain't going to try and give you the pieces you need just for an awkward piece back that we're not sure can work. That's not something that a smart GM would do. But the article does continue. Saying, uh, the, oops, I'm all over the place. I am all over the place. But anyway, okay, I'm sorry. That is the end of the article. It, it goes off to really to just break down um, between the different players of PJ, Daniel Gafford, Julius Randle, who's good at what, where you put him where. And I'm going to just throw this up here. We're going to take a look at Julius Randle's stats from last season. He was able to put up 24 points, 9.2 rebounds, 5 assists, 0.3 blocks a game, 0.5 steals, 3.5 turnovers, and 2.7 fouls per game, while shooting 47% from the field, 31% from three, six foot eight power forward. So cool. He's not too old. He's 29. Still fairly young. He is a veteran in the league. He's been around. This looks good on paper. We get a back a player who can put up 24 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists. You can argue that's almost better than the production of both PJ and Daniel Gafford. So on paper, by the numbers, yes, you may be getting more bang for your buck. And even if the salaries do match, the trade can go through. The problem is you now have another player that will be commanding a big contract in Julius Randle, where right now the Dallas Mavericks... Yes, we may need to give Kyrie Irving another contract. You could argue that he may give us a discount because his next contract might be his last contract. A lot of people can also agree that Klay Thompson, his current contract, most likely will be his last contract. And then there's Luka Doncic, who is going to be commanding a lot of money once when he's able to extend his contract as well. Derek Lively will get a rookie extension, but after that, he'll command more money. So in the long run, it doesn't really make sense. In the short run, it also doesn't make sense to me. We're getting a piece in Julius Randle to put at the four, who also needs to score. I mean, he's not going to be putting up those points off of just a couple touches a night. He also needs the ball. His defense is also questionable, and like I said earlier, he is injury prone. So what's the lesson that we learned today, folks, is that we need to trust Nico Harrison to make all the trades. If you're an opposing GM or if or a fan of another team, you can't cook up a trade better than Nico Harrison that can not only benefit the Dallas Mavericks, but that can also benefit other teams. In that trade scenario, you're not giving up PJ because, again, on-ball defense is something that we need. Him and Najee will pair up very well this upcoming season. And giving away Daniel Gafford, yes, we can trust Derek Lively will do his job at, at as a starting five, 
But I also like having Daniel Gafford as my backup five or just interchangeable who starts, who comes off the bench. It doesn't matter. Ne Nico Harrison knows that Daniel Gafford and Derek Lively are a pairing that we need moving forward, as well as Najee Marshall and PJ Washington. And if you start to make too many trades to your roster, it's really hard to build that cohesion and just that chemistry for a team that's trying to get back to the finals. But you guys let me know down in the comment section. Do you think that we should look at a trade for Julius Randle? Or are you like me? Or like, it doesn't matter. We don't need to look at trades. The team is good, good as is. And all we need to focus on is the upcoming season. Let me know what you think down in the comment section down below. We can have a conversation about it. But that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you for making this far to the video. Make sure to check out our Twitter and Discord. Links in the description below. Consider becoming a channel member. We are doing another giveaway. The winner will be announced the first week of October, as well as this Friday stream is very special. No special guests, no video games, but it will be a fun one. Make sure you tune in. Until next time, y'all take care. Drink water. Peace.